All right, we're just gonna do a walk around of the new 2016 Ram Sport Crew Cab with a 6.4 foot bed. Uh, not easy to find. All right, this is a nice black color. And let's get up to it in the sunlight so you can see. It's got that nice brilliant, brilliant flake in the, uh, in the paint there. So it really shines really nice. These newer Rams also have these blinkers and uh, guidance lights there on the side. The blinkers, actually. All right. This is a Hemi. And these rims can either come in black with the black sports package where they powder coat them. Or uh, another option of what I could do to these rims is uh, they put uh, something that's called Plasti Coat. And that's something that they do at the dealership. Um, I'll give a little review on that later. Plasti coat is basically a spray rubber coating. It could come in many colors, and uh, uh, when you don't want it anymore, you just cut it with a razor blade and peel it off. It's like a rubber coating. Okay. The difference between these newer ones, these sport models, they got the painted bumpers. It's got the black grill, but you notice it has chrome accents on that on that grill. Okay. See from the front black with the chrome accents. See the black inside? All right. This is not a black package as you can see the uh, as you can see the uh, the badging is chrome on this. It's not blacked out. I didn't get it all blacked out, but it does have all the same features. It has these head uh, the LED headlights and these are LED lighting as well all right you can see this is a sport meaning that the hood has these vents i don't think they're operational though i think they're just more for looks than anything but it does give it a pretty mean look to it all right okay let's just do a quick walk around before we go inside This is a 6.4 foot bed. All right. One thing about this sport has that rear window that's built into it. That uh, that's electronic. It opens, and it's got the rear defrost on it as well. This one also came with a uh, with a tow hitch, trailer hitch, the chrome exhaust tips. Obviously, I put some, um, that's a magnet, that's not a sticker. <laughs> and of course, go Trump. Hey. <laughs> All right. It's got the side steps, the chrome side steps. I think they look much better than the black uh, side steps that come with the, the blacked out truck. Because those ones tend to be rounded. Uh, it's not just for the looks. You know, black could look pretty good, but they're, uh, they're like a round tube and they're kind of ugly. Uh, these, these chrome ones, as you can see, you know, they got RAM written on them, and they're, you can see the shape, I'll give you a better shape, and it's got this nice rubber tread on it, you know, I had that in my other RAM too, so, very nice. We're going to start by going in, this is a keyless entry, okay, I can grab my keys, I'll show you. Even though it has the key here, the key to actually get inside there, you'd have to you'd have to flick this, and then the key pops out. That's for the doors. Okay, but we'll never use that unless the battery goes dead in this. All right, comes with a remote start, which I'll show you. I think you gotta hold this for a second. Uh, there we go. Just gotta 
just got to hold that button for a second in order for it to start. I just got it, so excuse me. And let me see. I may be able to shut it off again. Let's see if we can shut it off again by holding that button again. Yep, that's what we do. That'd be coming handy in the winter. All right. Let's go inside. Unlock it first. Let's see what we have going inside. Okay. We have nice leather trim. Look at this nice stitching. All right. We have compartments here for, I don't know, laying a cell phone or something. And a deep compartments for maybe laying some paper towels or uh, rolled paper towels or something that you need to carry with here. Um, I think this interior is really sharp. This is all leather as well. A nice leather stitching. This is a black interior. Doing this a little bit in the dark here. All right. The way this uh, seat goes here, we have this pulled down. There's a nice armrest with a couple drink holders. All right. Now, you also have two drink holders here between the seat. So, plenty of, plenty of places to hold your drinks on the long trips. All right. Very comfy in the back. Very roomy, as you can see. Okay. This is the full quad cab. Uh, I'm sorry, the crew cab. Notice the, the back door is the full size. Okay. This, the, the crew cab, that door would not be the full size, just like the front. It would probably be three quarters of it. Okay, but it's the full size door, so this is a crew cab. Quad cab is the shorter, so you got less you got less space in here in the back. Okay, this here you got plenty of room. Now these seats fold up and there's storage compartments underneath. So you gotta put that up. And you got a pretty deep storage compartment here. If you put this down, you got more storage over here in the back, all the way deep back there, okay. So you go pretty deep back here for a storage. Not a big storage spot, but nonetheless it is. Uh, the back seat will fold up. Okay. So we got the back seats all folded up here. And let me go from the other end. Walk around. Okay, you can see I got my plenty of room for my jumper cables, a, f a fire extinguisher, full-size fire extinguisher, uh, my uh, my bar for cargo gear to go in the bed. Uh, it could go straight across over here. Okay, now you see over here it's got the separation for the two seats. So it used to be that that wasn't there in the last model. So because these seats are split and it's not one big bench that goes up. You don't have the full storage all the way in the back over here, so you're gonna need to have some kind of storage bin or a tonneau cover in the back. You know, uh, it's still nice little storage. These things come with plenty of storage. You lift up the back, you lift up the back carpet like that, and they got these storage compartments here. You just lift that up, and as you can see, you got this container. Trying to do it with one hand here. That lifts out. I got it full of tools. Okay. Just drops in. Now you can put you can put ice in this bucket and hold drinks underneath the floor or on the long trips or food. Uh, I got tools in it. <laughs> All right. And I got the same thing on the other side as well, underneath the passengers, uh, the drivers. Uh, compartment behind the driver's seat okay so I'm gonna close this up pull that it's a rubber matted carpet okay it's carpet here rubber on the other side you got storage compartments between the behind the back seat over here we have I don't know if you can see this has your charging station or lighter Okay, get your air conditioning here in the back. You got your vents here in the back. All right, on both sides. 
also underneath the seat. I don't know if you can see that. There's a couple vents here underneath the back seat as well. All right, let me see if I can put on a light while, I'm, while I got this going. There we go. See that? You got some vents there underneath the back seat. There we go. This is a better view. We got the charger. The, got the uh, vents. You got your storage compartments over here. Let's try to do this again. Give you a better view of everything I got back there. All right. Once again, if you fold this seat, this cover down, this is a f new feature they got at the floorboard. I don't care much for it, I'm never going to use it, but if you fold these things up, okay, the seat folds up. This is actually not a seat, this is a, a floor storage bin. So what happens is you fold these things out. Now you got. Now you got a, a flat, large area where you keep the seats where you keep the seats folded up, and then you got this big storage area or big uh, area where you can uh, carry a cargo or load or something. Maybe let a dog lay down on this, uh, and you do it on the other side as well. And you got the full length of the bed, okay? And you can still have your drinks in there available. Okay, so fold this out of the way, put that back down. You still got more storage here in the back, as you can see. They put, I guess, their comes with their towing, wiring stuff, uh, connectors, and uh, came with the wheel lock kit. All right, this should always come with the truck. You should never have to pay extra for this. If you do, your dealer sucks. My last dealer from the last truck, I had to pay for this separately to buy wheel locks. This one, they threw it in. All right, so fold the seats down. You got that nice leather seats here in the back. And let me climb up in. Put down my seats. It's a big roomy back seat here. Plenty of room. Okay. Now, take a look from the back seat before we climb in the front. I already got my sunglasses up there. <laughs> and I got my easy pass for travel. Let's take a look. All right, instrument cluster. See what that looks like. All right, you can see there's a rotary dial. That's your shifter. Yeah, it's weird, it takes some getting used to. Uh, and then just a press button start on this one. Comes with the uh, comes with the 8.4 nav system. It's a big screen there. All right, uh, and your control system. Now this model has a center console. Uh, I preferred kind of before. Well, we'll see. This this one has the two bucket seats that are. 10-way uh, control, electronic control, and a center console, and then more storage over here. Previously, it was a bench seat, uh, split, uh, was it 60-40 bench seat, and this was the same kind of a console here for storage, the armrest, but there was no console in the center, so you could have a third person just sit there. All right, let's uh, go inside around front. Whoopsie daisy. Watch where I'm going. All right. Open the door. And the door here. Got obviously a full length flashlight here. A police flashlight. Fit right here in the door. In addition to that, they give you some more cup holders. I don't know why you'd hold them in the door though. And that fits in there. Nice. Then you get more storage here. Hold little things. This is all nicely leather trimmed. 
Feels very nice, cushiony. Controls. You got your lock, unlock of all the doors. You got your rear window controls, front rear control, window controls. A uh, nice little feature here I'm going to show you is this button here in the center. Let's see if you could see that. This button here in the center is for the fold away side view mirrors. Uh, that's electronic, that's a handy feature. And then of course left and right uh, side view mirror controls. Um, the controls over here, let's see, this would be for your rear bed lighting. Uh, you have a spotlight in the rear bed. I like to set the uh, control here to auto. That's for your headlights to automatically go on when it gets, uh, uh, when you start the vehicle. All right, and you've got your on, your, uh, you got your uh, headlights on over here. Uh, what the heck is this? Uh, I forget what, they, what these ones are. Anyway, you got one of these are parking lights, one of them is the headlights, and then you got the auto. I like the auto, and then I like to push this. See, so if you push it, you also get the uh, fog lights in the front down the bottom go on when you're driving, and they really brighten up the road. And then their dimmer switch, which would also turn on the lights in the control uh, panel and affect them. You have an electronic control here, which could adjust your brake pedals that come closer or further away from you. That's electronic control there. And then the tilt for the steering wheel is manual here. You got your wiper controls on the uh, on the blinker switch. However, okay, so you got your wiper controls on the blinker switch. Uh, however, this vehicle comes with a rain sensing wipers. You don't even need to touch it. Last night I just bought this vehicle and it rained. And uh, the wipers went on all on their own. <laughs> Uh, the steering wheel is interesting. Uh, let's focus this a little bit. Okay. Voice commands for the for the phone. Okay. Well, I guess the vehicle's got to be on for that. Uh, and then for the control uh, cluster controls, I'll show you how that's going to work. Uh, all on the readout over here. It all shows out on here and in the main controller uh, screen. You got your cruise control. And on the back of the steering wheel, see you got these buttons, so when you're driving, you got your hand on the wheel. It's a rocker with a center button, and you got one like that on the other side of the steering wheel as well for controlling your radio stations and the volume. Let me just check out your fog lamps I was talking about. You light those up as well. When you press the button, these would also light up. Okay, and they really brighten up the road. Okay, let's uh, start our vehicle with our remote start again. Or you know what, let's just go inside the vehicle. I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, it's hot today. If you're in the vehicle, you do not need to put this into any key. There's no place to put it. So there's a little storage bin over here. I just like to throw it in there. And as long as it's prox in the proximity of the vehicle, you can press this button. It's both completely. Yeah. Oh, with your foot on the brake first, you press the button, and it starts. Looking to sell your house is only one person. Okay, let's shut that radio off there for now. The volume, anyway. And this is your your controller, uh, your control center. Okay, we've got it set to the radio, and you got your uh, XM, you got your XM radio, your FM, AM, of course. You can set all these stations, which I haven't really set yet. Just got it yesterday. See, it's muted now. Uh, media, if you have any separate show is being continued. Got a call. I'm recording this on my cell phone. So, my name is Vic, obviously. This is my cell phone. That's my media player that's connected here otherwise you got SD card auxiliary USB connectors which they would be right here in the center console nice uh, seems like a leather or pleather like thing <laughs> material uh, if you pull up on this latch right here it opens up a storage compartment where you keep your keep your insurance cards okay you got a, a thing here that lifts out for storing your change 
All right, and it just snaps into place, so it's in there tight. Eh, it's, it's not that deep, maybe a fist worth, okay? And over here, you've got your controls where you could plug in your, you can put in an SD card with media, or you could plug in auxiliary or put in a USB. And then you've got another little charger there, so you charge the device in here. Okay. Now, let me close this top, and there is a, another place where you can squeeze down the bottom. See, this one just opens the top, and then there's another one under here. Okay, if you open that one, another compartment that's really deep goes in here. Look at this. Here's a, here's a CD case, okay? That drops in there, and then it's still got more than a fist uh, of space, and it's very roomy. Got all kinds of junk in here already, batteries and all kinds of garbage. Flash, another flashlight. All right, very roomy. Can fit a lot of things in here. You got two drink holders, one in front of the other. I prefer side by side, but that's okay. Let's see how it works with the big drinks and such. They got these little. Or, well, they got these uh, rubber, uh, you can see them, knobbies over here that will hold your drinks in space in place or compress for the larger drinks. Let's see if you could see that. It'll, see how they're flexible? Okay, in here, I got my junk. You got the place where you could charge your cell phone you put you plug your cell phone in here and you got two stations here this is this is like a plastic and this is more like a rubber here so what you do is you lay your cell phone down in here and then the cable for the cell phone charger goes lays right in there so it's nice and tight and it's not moving around anywhere not great if you're using your cell phone as a gps but in this particular vehicle uh you don't need to because we have your uh uh, control layout here all right um, now this uh, this get back to the control station here for the controls all right this is an interesting control panel you have heated seats and vented seats right now I do have air that's blowing through this the green in the seats here have little micro holes in them I don't know if you can see little micro holes in them just goes contributes to the design nice and then when you press these buttons over here for the uh, driver's side ventilation or the passenger side so they got individual two zone cooling or heating you press the button uh, turn it on they're both on now now I got now I got the air coming out of the vents and the air coming out of my seat it actually blows. There's a fan, it seems like, in the seat that blows up your up your butt and cools your butt and back nice. I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a very handy feature in these, uh, in these uh, very nicely put together seats with lumbar controls um, and 10-way adjustments. Very comfortable. Comes with the Ram floor mats. They're rubber with the Ram logo on them. They're rubber backing and then black carpet. All right. Now the old model dash, this used to all be open. In this model, see it used to be open like this and you just lay stuff there and everybody saw it. Now you can throw all kinds of junk in here, plenty of storage there, and close that. And then of course in addition, you've got your place where you put all your paperwork um, for your insurance, your owner's manual, all that stuff in the regular uh, well, compartment. Okay. Side storage door, you have compartments there as well for storage. Back to this uh, control system. All right, so you have your backup camera. I just turned on the backup camera. You can see everything that's behind me. Look at that huge screen for that backup camera, and it is clear. And as you get closer to an object, uh, as you get closer to objects, see this? Uh, it gives you a little you can see how close you are before your bumper touches it. Once you hit these red things, you're still not, bumper's still not touching. You still got a couple of inches before the, the bumper touches. Uh, 
one thing that's interesting with this is they got the front and back controls. Let's close this screen out. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Back to the control panel. Uh, we got the mirror dimmer, which dims them pretty dark. I think too dark when it's at night, unless somebody's riding behind you with the uh, their high beams on. Okay. Yeah, and then controlling, you can set all the uh, controls for the lights, the door locks. Um, yeah, you get tons of customization here. When the, when you put on the alarm, there's the horn beep. Uh, uh, press the key fob once, it unlocks one door or all the doors. You know, it's got a lot of settings here. I still need to go through. All right. Um, got plenty of apps here, which are interesting. And they've got look at this. You got iHeartRadio. Those that driver vent, you have backup cams, app manager, media. You know, you've got your climate controls all and such back here. And then you got Slacker Radio, uh, radio stations, Pandora, your travel link, your GPS navigator. All right. <laughs> Yelp. Uh, so you get access. Look, and you got Wi Fi here, uh, but you got to subscribe to that, I believe, in order to get that from the satellite. All right, so we got the climate controls. We already went over those. Just brings up a little more customization for that screen. So, driver side, passenger side uh, controls. So if the passenger likes it a little bit warmer, uh, we you know change those controls for them. All right, um, I still have to go over this. Uh, maybe the fans on low. You hear that? Fan went up to high. Yeah. Pretty neat, huh? But you could also just adjust that through this control here. See how that works? All right. Then we got the navigation system. This you got to customize. A little disappointed that it's not voice controlled today. So you got to go in the controls, set up your addresses, your points of uh, points of interest. You just click on, and you know it gives you categories. Where you looking for gas? You're looking for movies, hotels, uh, banking. All right what's around you um, okay so it gives you different you could go by geo coordination uh, you put in some geo coordinates in order to find something it tells you where local trails are points on a map um, all right closest cities view the map you get this big screen and on the screen in the customization you could change the type of vehicle the Ram truck was silver and uh, there's a couple of them that are silver but you could barely see them at night uh, so I set this red uh, vehicle shows my my street where I'm at right now and you could zoom in or zoom out uh, the map control okay zoom in on the map zoom zoom out zoom in you got plenty of other options you could put on there and then of course your phone controls uh, for when you're driving all right uh, Let's take a look at this intermit, uh, instrument control cluster. So we're going to be using these to see over here. There's a menu, and then here's the control. I like to drive with it so that you can see what the what your driving average miles per gallon are, what kind of range you have based on your full tank. I only got 72 miles on here. Okay, right now I'm just hovering, and they could give you other additional uh, information. Right now it's 82 degrees out direction that you're pointing okay so let's see uh, you can navigate through by going up or down or left and right over here so it tells you how much air you got in your tires and if I go left or right uh, I could go through the different controls you know temperatures of the oil and all that other stuff how much uh, oil how much driving I got before my next oil change Okay, uh, let's go through. Uh, you could just have an electronic uh, speedometer, or you got the speedometer here on the cluster. All right, along with your uh, oil temperature, uh, you got your battery, and the water temperature. Okay, and here's your tachometer. All right, let's scroll through the. What else we got in here? Uh, I guess we could do a setup. Right, not right now. Uh, start messages. Let's see. Bluetooth control. So you could control the radio and see the radio from there as well. Uh, no need. You got that big screen to the right of you. 
All right. Uh, and back to where we started. Now, what's interesting, watch this. I'm gonna put this in gear. Check out how you put this in gear. I put that in reverse. That reverse cam comes up again. If I put it in drive, well, it changes back to whatever screen you're on. By the way, you got a nice, this nice little area. Ram, it's not too deep. I just like to lay my sunglasses in there. You got a huge dashboard here for laying stuff, but you get a nasty glare if you're driving with crap up there. All right, so if I get close to my garage, I'm I'm gonna move closer to the garage. I'm driving right now as I'm talking to you. Probably not too bright, but look what comes up on the screen over here. You get this vehicle readout and it tells you how close you are. I'm gonna keep moving closer to the garage. It starts beeping. It tells you how close you are, which is kind of tough with these trucks to tell when you're parking how close you are to another vehicle. I guess I shouldn't move any closer now, otherwise I'll probably hit the garage. And you've got that same kind of a control in the back. It shows you how close you are to back up, but you also have the backup cam, so you could also see that. But in the front, you can't really see. So that's a neat little thing that they've got there. All right, let me back up a little bit. Get, a, get away from my garage, okay? See? The further I get away from it, there we go, no longer a problem. And you notice it's, uh, it's got the uh, right and left, so uh, you know the left or right part of the uh, front of the truck has sensors on it and the bumper that'll show uh, that uh, this way you know that maybe if you're close to something that's at an angle, uh, the, the one side would light up a little bit more because that's closer. All right, so let me back up a little bit more here. And we're gonna go to the back of the bed. Just gonna show you some additional features they have there now. Okay, so that's just, uh, oh wait, before we do that, this, this vehicle also comes with, uh, what we have here is, let's see, do you see this? Three three remote controls for a garage door opener, uh, but I don't have a garage door opener, so it's kind of useless to me. It's got a nice little uh, parking light uh, or reading lamp, lamp. It keeps uh, ambient light in the vehicle uh, when it's dark out. Um, you've got a controller over here. This controller is for the back window. Right back there where you see that it's split. So if I hit this rocker, let me, let me see if I can do it right now. I'll hold the rocker. You see that back window opens up for you? And you can you can choose how much you want it open all the way. Or partially or closed completely. And then that window in the back, uh, the whole entire window in the back is also has a defroster. So that's very nice. Well, look at this. This vehicle also comes with a sunroof. Okay, so we have these lights here. These are LED, these new ones, and they're bright. They're very nice. They're nice and very bright here, even in the daylight. Okay, and this controller, let's see if I got the right controller here. Oh, this controller right here in between is what controls that. See, we just moved it up, and then we got another, opens up. Very nice. Get in, if you want that fresh air while you're driving down the road instead. And... Alright. Let's close that up. Oh. There we go. That's closed, yeah. Alright. Close that if you don't want the light in your eyes while you're driving, even though this is tinted. Alright. And we're gonna go back to the back of the bed and then we'll be done, okay? I'll just show you in the back the LED lighting systems. Shut off the vehicle. This does come with a sprayed bed liner, okay? However, the railing here is hard plastic. Uh, notice over here if you wanna put in some kind of a uh, uh, what do you call it, utility uh, rack, you're going to have to cut out along this 
area with uh, maybe a utility knife uh, to get to the where the hole is. All right. They do have. On, let me see. Right, let's just go open up the back of the truck here. Okay, here's where the backup cam is. You got a key or electronic remote. Okay, all right, you got a chain in the back. <laughs> uh, this is a nice, tough sprayed bed liner. Over here, we have some tie downs. And hidden over here, we have some LEDs. They're very bright, they light up the back of the truck very good. And then up top as well, we have those uh, those lights up there. They light up the whole back of the truck at nighttime when you press that button uh, near the uh, 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 near the light uh, controller in the uh, um, in the front in the front cab. Okay, you got one on the other side there as well, and uh, you got some tie downs over there in that corner. Another one in that corner. And this whole bed is sprayed bed liner. It's really tough. All right, one more thing I want to add in about the radio system here. We didn't listen to the radio at all. Okay, so once we turn this radio on, uh, we got a guy doing a commercial right now. Let's change the station, something else. Okay, we got some music going on. I'm not up that high, and it's very loud. The bass is. The surround sound on this thing is phenomenal in here. The bass sounds excellent too. Um, okay, look at this. You could press the, there's a map button, and while you're listening to the radio, you could also watch where you are for the map and still have up all your radio controls. Let's shut that off for a second if you're just watching, listening to the radio. It shows you uh, what's going on here in the radio, name of the songs and such. But if you hit HD, it buffers, and it gives you more information. The full, full names, okay? You go to, I'm not exactly sure what this HD is. Maybe you could see what songs are. Not, not, not exactly sure what that does. I haven't gone through it yet. But let's change to another station. Let's hit HD. It's buffering. It's connected to a satellite, and then it gives you additional information. I'm not sure what these little numbers are next to that. I'll have to get back to you on that. But either way, I just wanted to let you know how how great this uh, radio sounds. Save big at Sears Outlet, friends and family. You can hear that bass. Is a lane of the All right. right which you That's it. I just wanted to give you the two cents about the about the radio. Let you hear the radio, how good it sounds too. Oh, uh, one more thing. Remember, I was talking about that AC. I found out what these two different buttons are for. Um, one button, if you have it off, the cooling is still going through the vents. All right, through your front vents. However, you press the button uh, once, you get both vents on. That's so air blows in through the seat and through the back, but you could select, you press it again, it's only blowing up through your butt here, okay? It only blows up through the seat, the air. Uh, but either way, that's nice, I like that. Keep that cool through my back and the seat. It's hot out, I'm sweaty, all right? So, once again, independent left and right controls for temperature, and this, this, this radio uh, sounds pretty good. All right, guys, that's it. One more neat little feature I'd like to bring to your attention. Even though we have the left and the passenger side, uh, you, you click on this, it'll light it up. Click on that, it'll light up the right side. And then you could control the adjustments for the mirrors, side view mirrors. Here's a neat little thing. You have the center button here. What does that center button do? Tell you what that center button does. It's an automatic fold away of these mirrors on both sides, electronically controlled. That's very handy, especially at car washes or if you live on a street that's pretty narrow. 
where you have people always taking out your side mirrors <laughs> that's not that's pretty common in the city so uh, uh, that that'll be a very handy feature so you don't got to get out and fold them in on your own all the time me I go out to play pool in the bar I have a friend that always goes to the side view mirror and he'll push it into the side on my old truck anyway and I had to get out to uh, to fix it back up or pull over if I didn't notice it until I was driving now I just press a button and they go in press another button go back out awesome love it also in a previous video don't think I went over the four-wheel drive mode okay so with the four-wheel drive mode unfortunately this is not shift on the fly while you're driving you have to have it in neutral with your foot on the brake in order to change to uh, four-wheel drive. I know it says auto four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. I'm not sure what the four-wheel drive auto is. I got to take a look at that button. But we got the low and we got the lock. Auto four-wheel drive. Hmm. Get back to you on that. That never worked on my old truck. Never had a button there. Uh, so, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. It seems to be more responsive. It happens a little bit quicker. Oh. Four-wheel drive low is taking. Let's see. Four-wheel drive lock. Four-wheel drive low. So complete four-wheel drive. Put transmission in neutral. Oh. I'm in park. You gotta have it in neutral, not even park. To go into four wheel drive low. I like them apples. Let's see, four wheel drive long. Two wheel drive. Four wheel drive. And you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and the buttons go. Uh, this is retry uh oh four wheel drive okay I can hear it working there we go four wheel drive low all right go back to two wheel drive you can hear it clicking now all right so it does happen a little bit quicker it's a little more responsive my last truck it took a while to do uh, auto four wheel drive I'm not sure what that's up what's up with that does it automatically switch to four wheel drive mode I don't hear nothing clicking, so I think we're in two-wheel drive until we need the four-wheel drive. I'll take a look at the manual and I'll get back to you on that. Let me put, go back to two-wheel drive, drive around the city most of the time. Two-wheel drive, it's also more economical. Uh, economic. Woo, economical. All right, <laughs> sorry about that. Get a little tongue-tied. So it's a little more economical. Uh, four-wheel drive, uh, you know... Uh, you can't make as tight of turns because of the, when you got it in four-wheel drive mode and of course the mileage is not as good uh, not that the mileage is great anyway on a four-wheel drive uh, because as you can see even though I just got the truck I only have 72 miles on it it's averaging 13.7 miles per gallon now on the highway you could get better mileage out of these um, but uh, usually requires put it back in park uh, requires that you throt you you have to uh, play with the throttle um, you can't just drive with your foot on the throttle at a certain spot you have to actually um, feather the throttle a little bit you know when you get on the gas you got to let go of it and then put your foot back to that point uh, so that you can keep the most economical driving way you know you can see that when you're uh, when you have this. Hold on a second. You know what? We're going to go out for a quick ride. Uh, let me put this down for one sec. Sorry about that. And we're going to go for a quick ride just so that you can see. All right. Make sure nobody's behind me. Let me watch where the hell I'm going. See that wherever you can. Got my 
seatbelt on, let's go for a ride. When you get on the gas, see that the number in the green showing you what your current miles per gallon are. I guess at the level of uh, how far you got your foot down stomped on the gas. I'm gonna get on a main road, so once all these cars let me go. Side street, but it seems pretty busy right now. Okay. You got your foot on the gas and you're driving local. The mileage is low, of course. Miles per gallon. That's only when you're accelerating. So let, let me turn the corner here into the main road. We can take a look what we got. This thing drives like a Cadillac, I may, I may add. Okay. Take my foot off the off the gas and just throttle it. You see the the, the mileage immediately goes up to what you're gonna average. Alright. I'm at a stop sign. It's going down. I'm going now, get on the gas. Got some nice pickup with this Hemi. All right, now I get my foot off the off the gas. And you can see we're only going about 35 miles an hour. And you see that that mileage is all over the place. Like at 96 right now. You know, I'm in, I'm going for a couple of blocks and then you know on the gas, off the gas. And this is what's going on. I get on the gas right now. I, I let back, as you can see, on the tack there. And we're just keeping the uh, keeping it steady now. About 30 miles an uh, 30 miles an hour. And it says averaging between 20 and 35, I guess. And it's, this is if I just coasted the speed. But when you live in a city, you're uh, you're going to be all over. You're going to be your mileage is going to be up. Uh, you're going to be getting on the gas. You're going to be getting off the gas. And the way that it averages out, it's uh, the mileage on these things ain't that great. All right, uh, I would say for city driving, the best, the best you're probably going to get is about uh, 15 miles per gallon on average. All right, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, on the highway, if you go for a very long ride, you could get some decent mileage out of it for a truck. Uh, maybe, uh, 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 maybe uh, 23, uh, 24 miles per gallon. Maybe even a little bit more if you're coasting most of the time on the highway. Uh, but when you're on the in, in city driving on the on the gas, off the gas. Uh, you're gonna get between 11 and 15 miles a gallon, depending on how well you can throttle that. You know, if you're always on the gas and then you don't let your foot up, you're gonna be using a lot more gas. I had to learn this after having this truck for a while, uh, or my previous truck. Uh, I learned that uh, only towards the end of my lease, okay? See, now we're, we're, on, a, we're on a road here that we're coasting, um, going uh, about 40 miles an hour, almost 40 miles an hour. And I got my foot steady on the gas right now, just barely on the on the throttle. I'm even letting back on it a little bit. You see the my, uh, miles per gallon economy reading going up. Coming to a merge here. Now I got to get back. Foot on the gas. Mileage goes down. But I like to have that in front of me, that uh, the screen. So you know, you got the. You got the speedometer on the right over here. You know, um, I like to have this uh, gauge in front of me so that I could uh, watch and keep an eye on am I getting the most economical uh, mileage out of it. This way, uh, uh, you know, gas price is going up. You know, this thing not being the best on gas. And I live in New Jersey, uh, so I'm raising the tax 23 cents or, or more soon so per gallon so uh, that will add up unfortunately most of these uh, 
most of these dealerships around here don't carry around the eco diesel and uh, uh, they, they try to uh, get you away from that they'd say oh it's too expensive I think it's a three thousand dollar option but most of them don't carry it around here and um, I'm in New Jersey and uh, good luck finding the uh, um, what's it the big diesel uh, the Cummins uh, and that's a out of my price range anyway because that, that adds considerable amount to the price but anyway, I'm on the highway right now, and uh, we'll uh, let you go. I just wanted to show you that new feature, or that feature, how it works.